We humans, we are a storytelling apes. <laughs> this is who we are, this is how we socialize, this is how we entertain, this is how we decided to pass information through the time and space. It's all probably originated somewhere around campfire shortly after the language evolved. <coughs> At the very beginning, that was probably just a small group of people between which our ancestors were sharing their stories. These stories were likely to live with the tribe or the small group and die with them. But soon after, the most memorable story found the way between the groups. The stories were so important that you could actually make a living doing exactly this, being a traveling storyteller. And you would be in the great company of Homer or Herodotus, who on the top of being just a greatest poet of antiquity or the father of history, they were also traveling storytellers. The invention of writing gave a new medium for storytelling. Written down stories were preserved in time. After thousands of years, Iliad, Odyssey, Gilgamesh, they are all part of school curriculum. They were all preserved to, for us using writing. Mass media bridged time and space with unprecedented speed. Daily stories started spreading throughout countries, societies, continents, and throughout the world. Invention of World Wide Web further improve our ability of sharing information. But what's most important, it democratized the way how we share information. Now you can share your story with all world. You can do this for free. You can do this in no time. And you can do this thanks to social media. So what are the social media? There is no good definition of social media. Broadly speaking, social media is the most of user-generated content. What I did, I couldn't find a good definition of social media, so I took 50 of them. I took the most frequent words out of this set, and the most frequent words are online people content, interaction, information, uh, communication, conversation, sharing. And these words pretty much reflect well what social media are all about. What is so specific and so important about social media? To do this, I would have to borrow a quote from Marshall McLuhan, the brilliant media researcher, the person who coined in early 60s the phrase global village. The medium is the message. What he meant by this quote was that the way how we choose to communicate information is as important as this information itself. My message is different because I choose to speak it out. If I choose to write it down, it will be slightly different. If I choose to use Twitter to communicate, it will be different. If I, was, if I choose to use a video medium, it will be different message. Basically, the medium would shape my message. So, Let's see how social media can shape the online content. Online content, user-generated content, comes in volumes. 300 million posts a day are generated only by Twitter alone. All ecosystem generates far more content. So what we can do with such a vast amount of data? We can do lots of things, but let's start with very simple. We can do counting. We can count all the words in all user-generated content on the world and find out which are the most frequent. And this is a pretty positive message. Look at these words, love, people, follow, happy, day, with very few swear words. We can do a little bit more. We can classify all the content into the topics. And this is quite hedonistic picture with food and games in the top three. The fact that the weather made up to top four is probably a unique British contribution. 
If we look at the most sh mentioned individuals in social media, this is the entertainment, uh, entertainment channel and celebrity, B-class celebrity. People are sharing lots of links using social media. These links are most likely leading to the biggest internet domain like Amazon, Facebook, and YouTube. So this is all quite predictable. But let's look at the individual story, what we can tell analyzing social media traffic. We probably remember these two gentlemen. This is the 2012 London mayoral election. That was the race for the office of mayor of London. And it happened between Ken Livingston on the right and Boris Johnson on the left. Boris Johnson, as we all know, won but only just by very narrow margin. So we plotted last two weeks of this campaign. The top chart shows the volume of all content gener generated around Boris Johnson and Ken Livingston. Boris Johnson is represented by the CN line, Ken Livingston by the violet one. And we can see that in the first week, the race was pretty much head to head. In the second, win, Boris, the second week, Boris gained advantage. We can analyze all the sentiment of all this content, and we can weight the volume by the sentiment. And on the bottom plot, this is what we did. And this is pretty much the same story. However, the uh, difference is even smaller. And this reflects pretty much what happened during the election. Boris won, as we know but he won by a very narrow margin. And till the end, people wasn't really sure who would really be the winner of this, converse, of this race. We can look also on the uh, demographic distribution of the uh, all comments which people placed about both candidates. And if we looked in detail into these comments, we could see that there is a slightly more likelihood that the men will be talking positively about Ken Livingston than Boris Johnson. However, it wouldn't make him a winner. We can do one more thing. People are sharing uh, links online. And people are sharing also the links to the stories about Boris and Ken. So what we are see here, uh, each dot represents one link which people are sharing. The higher the link, the more people share this link. The farther right each dot is, it means that the more people have seen this link. And what we are doing here, we are playing two weeks worth of data. And we can see how links originating in the top left corner. And they are moving up to the top right corner when more people are sharing the links and more people are exposed, more people are seeing the links about all these news stories. We can do. Another thing, we can, for example, look at the dynamic graph. This is the Twitter traffic about the both, both candidates. This is two weeks of the political campaign. And we can see that the violet uh, links, which are representing content about Ken Livingston and the CN represented his um, uh, Boris Johnson, are generating two distinctive hubs, and they are fighting with each other. This is basically a political fight which we can see live almost. And this should stop, yeah. Uh, another uh, example how the social media uh, data is related to other aspects of human activity is the social media and the financial market data. We looked briefly what was happening with the content generated around Facebook share price. And we took the data of the all eight hours when the NASDAQ stock exchange is open, and we played it. <laughs> and here, what we can see, there are these splashes of green and red coming from the Wall Street Journal from Bloomberg. What it is, these are the news. These are the tweets and retweets which are spreading good or bad news around the Facebook share price. And this is what happens during the trading hours, during eight trading hours of NASDAQ stock exchange. And if we look at the plot, 
we've got stock price represented by the yellow line, and we've got volume of positive comments represented by, green li by red line, and volume of negative comments represented by green line. And we can see that the splashes, if they are big enough, they can actually upset the balance between uh, positive and negative sentiment. So on the top chart, when we see that there is a big spike of negative sentiment, what it means that there was probably lots of negative news about Facebook share price. So what happened when the market opened? The price went down. Probably there were some news which were affecting the price. We have seen this kind of patterns many times about many different instruments. It doesn't mean that you can predict and make fortune using social media data. It just shows that there are certain relationships between the financial markets and the social media data. So we went a long way from the small group where a small group of our ancestors were sharing the story to the global community, which is sharing information around this digital, global campfire. What we are doing right now, we are at the very beginning of using this data, using some tools we have to learn some new things about ourselves. And I'm very much looking forward what more and how quickly we will learn new things about human and about society in a very so short future. Thank you very much. <laughs>